What's up guys, Ryan from Manscapes here. Finally, we've got the Mountain Paladarium update. Obviously, I've got my trap dry hands going in. I'm super excited. Without further ado, we'll get straight to it. As always from me, peace and love, I'm out. I've put this in five times speed. Reason being is because there's been a lot of changes in this tank since then. Now, initially what happened, the two lights that I had for the tank, those lights ended up actually breaking. Both of them did, one went and then the other one went. So then I have to use um, sort of like a temporary small light, which just wasn't enough for it. But as you can see, everything's going really well. Plants are looking great. Um, you know, there's a lot of growth from them and that's exactly what we need. So super, super, super happy about that. But there you can see the temporary light that I had to use, or these two. The smaller bar works, but um, that was only for a short while alongside these two until I got a larger light. But as you can see now, plants are just going crazy. So to me, I'm having to now trim this every three or four days. Um, I missed it down maybe it's every day or two. Um, yeah, every day or two. Um, and this here is me just cutting some plants back. Now this was the final, final result. Again, you know, there's certain things that I could have maybe cut off this, but at this stage, I'm letting it grow out because what I like to do is trim it so I can have it to grow or growing exactly how I want it. Um, I did also find a mushroom here, which was pretty cool. Uh, it's just a sign of good soil. That's what they say. So I'll go with that one. I'll go with that one. And then this is it here just before another water change. But as you can see, it's just going really well. Um, really, really happy with this tank so far. At this stage, it had been about a, a month, a month or something like that. And there's been a lot of changes in terms of the plants and things like that, which you will see, but this was about a month afterwards. This is just a super cute isopod overload. I thought I'd share it. Here's one of the mammy isopods, and I will show some of the baby ones a little bit later on. All in all, it was just going really well after the month mark, so I couldn't be happier. But the only thing was the lights, obviously, they broke. So I was waiting quite a bit of time for my light as it was out of stock. So I waited about two weeks for that to arrive. I also transferred the two giant armored fan shrimp from my other shrimp tank. And as you can see, this is fairly light. It's, it's just shed its skin. Okay, so this is how we've got it for now. Um, holes in the lid, fan in one of the holes so the front glass doesn't fog up and then you can actually see inside. Now it is dual water change, hence why the glass is a little bit murky now. It's dropped the water level just slightly, but as you can see, these are the issues I'm going to have with this lid I've made. So is it a full permanent lid? I don't know. Plants again are just going crazy. So. I might take this trend, tra trade sensor out just because that seems to be the one causing the issues um, with it just being so prolific. And then when you go to the top of this, as you can see, there's plants coming out of the hole. So if I was to keep a species in here, this would not be escape proof right now. Um, now I know I can barrier across this whole lid around the sides of the tank. The issue I'll have with that is this. Yeah. Um, so, I need another plan. I just need another plan. Whether that's adding more holes in this, another one here potentially, another one over there, we'll see. But at this stage, I still need to do something to this lid, which makes it not do this, because this keeps it off the front. However, the plants are coming out and it's condensating. So my other alternative is I was gonna get mosquito mesh and just glue them over these holes um, all the way around and that would be done and you know I wouldn't have to worry about it then however the only issue with that is it's not going to look as nice um, you know but we'll see you can't really see it from that side anyway the lid so I think that is something that I'm going to have to do but that'll be on another update because at this stage it's just doing so well everything that I'm, I'm just really happy with it 
and um, for me it was more getting it mature, letting it, um, you know, isopods breed, springtails, earthworms breed, everything like that and they have now. So I am getting ready to add something in here. I just can't find what I want. As you can see, it's just out of control again, so I need to cut it all down. What I do with the cuttings is I put some on, but the majority I put in my giant feeder tub, which has things like millworms, isopods, actually a massive, massive springtail culture. I just filled this giant sort of plastic tub with um, for, uh, fl forest floor, um, soil and you know dead um, wood, things like that. Exactly what I did for my uh, millipede tank and they're absolutely thriving there and I keep having reproduction and, and at least I know there's no parasites and nasties on them. But anyway, as you can see here, this is the before and we fade into the after. So it was a big cut down and I'm sure all the feeders will enjoy eating all of the um, excess plants anyway. We've got a super cute isopod. Now that's a tropical orange one there. It's probably the size of your little finger, smaller than that. I mean, this is zoomed in and you know how small moss is. So it's actually probably smaller than that, but it's just so cute. So at least I know this is at least sort of three, four generations on. Um, meaning probably more than that actually um, probably about sixth seventh generation so I know there's a lot of reproduction in there and um, enough for them to eat as well as me obviously adding additional things in for them yep another trim down and this one I took a lot off as well see I kind of put that forward because I was also doing a water change so a lot of things sort of came out I took some plants out of the water section also um, moved some around and did a big cut and finally here we are the stars of the show now there is a queen and four workers and they've got a little bit of brood but this is unfortunately the only shot because I didn't want to stress them out too much until I finally added them in which was a few days later but I'm glad this, um, I left it sort of this long, to be honest, because the plants have grown so well. They're well rooted. There's a lot of isopods, springtails. You see them everywhere on the rocks, even on the outside of the soil. So I know there's a lot in there. This was a time lapse over about two hours time. And as you can see, they didn't actually do that much. It was the day after I went to bed, woke up and they've moved. I do know where they've moved. It's inside that peperomia or underneath the peperomia, just below it, um, to the left there. But what I'll do is I'll show a little bit of footage of where it is, so you can get an idea. But it is towards the back, and uh, they're inside a little cave. It's hard to see them. So, and I don't wanna go poking in for now. I just want to let them settle in. I'm just really, really happy that I've got them. They're happy in there. I've seen them getting sugars, and typically I never have my phone with me or um, think about even recording. But what I will be doing is next update, once I've moved in, we'll be getting some um, activity from them and I know they'll be searching these trees, these branches, plants everywhere and they'll be climbing all over this and loving it. The water itself is heated at a constant 25 degrees and those vases go right down into the water so the soil is always kept at a nice tropical, subtropical environment for them. Um, and there's plenty of duckweed plants that are on the surface immersed and emerged in the water to climb up and down on. So I'm, I'm just really happy with this. I think they're gonna love it in here, in fact, and um, we'll see how they get on, and I will be updating these quite regularly. So stick around, guys. If you like the video, remember, smash that like button as well, um, and subscribe to my channel if you want to see the updates on these. Um, I will try and tag in the card for how I built this. I wish I did it in a better step-by-step -step guide, to be honest. But um, on my next builds, I will be making sure that I do every single um, finer detail of recording as I know some people have asked for how I made the rocks or how I got them attached to each other, etc, etc. So I will be doing that. Um, but either way, I'll tag in the card of the sort of brief uh, things that I did to get it to where it was anyway.
But it basically just has two islands, right and left there, as you can see, um, where the vases are the same size, go right underneath, and you've got that vase there on the right, or the smaller one that goes right down too, as you all do. You've got the same size vase from the right to the left again, and then you've got only one vase, which is slightly taller than um, the front two pillars, but by about two inches, and that was it. And this is where they've decided to nest towards the back. It sort of just went here straight away. It was almost as if they knew. It's sort of like, um, it's probably the darkest area under that peperomia, uh, really, really shaded. It's sort of like a little cave within the rocks where it hang overhangs, and they've dug a tunnel under there. As you can see, they've moved some of that mud on top of that moss, just at the bottom screen. But I think they'll be really happy in here. I think they'll love it. And uh, end of the day, the you know the as you can see, the aquatic life seem very happy in here. Some roots coming out of the uh, ground, and either way, I actually just really like how it looks. I think it makes it look more natural. I'm going to keep some, but I will be chopping them down if they do get excessively out of the ground or it won't. But for now, I'll just keep it there. Uh, the catfish like it as well, and here's one of the little caves um, which the two giant almond fan shrimp hide inside but unfortunately it didn't try and peek or anything for me maybe I should have pre -dro uh, dropped some food down for them so they came out but hey next time I'll try it and we'll see and then we end with the world's fastest snail but other than that guys if you like the video remember smash that like button subscribe to the channel and as always from me peace and love I'm out.